here I am with my golden cola mint and orange juice. Let's go check out my garden. So that's my veggie patch right there. You can see that's where the grass ends. And here is where we erected the beds with the help of our beautiful neighbors. And let me see if I can get a, a long shot from here. And that's all of it, that's what's growing. And let's take a look at each individual bed. So here's my corn growing as, as tall as trees. They're right at the back. And check this corn out. There we go, the cobs. Now you can tell when the corn is ready because the little tassels here are quite brown and dry and they look quite good in size as well. I will make a separate video tomorrow and I will show you how I harvest the corn and when you know it is quite right. And here is another one. Over here is capsicum. I've got a lot of capsicum growing. Jolly's going to help me. There it is, they all start out green. Yeah, And then because they, they um, lose the chlorophyll, then it turns into the different colors. And you can uh, harvest them when they are the different colors. That means fully ripe. Or as soon as you get your first yield, you need to harvest them. They do when um, the chlorophyll reduces, yes. And you need to harvest them quite soon, the first few ones, because they're quite close to the ground and they are the most prone to the pests. And of course, I don't use any chemicals in my garden, so no artificial um, chemicals, pesticides and herbicides. And you can see I've had to take a lot of care and uh, attend to these plants almost daily to ensure that they are healthy. I've got a little a concoction of chili garlic and vegetable oil which I spray on these and they're due for another spray. These look pretty healthy. Over here, lots of flowers, which and means uh, lots of fruit. A purpley black capsicum over here. And we've got uh, a purple one right here. So purpley black. What have we got here, Jordi? Okra. We've got okra and in Sri Lanka they call it uh, ladies fingers so that's them because they look like fingers little stubby what is things the word but for it? ladies fingers uh, bandaka is the word bandaka. right so it takes a long time to grow these plants so they took forever to grow to from two or three feet. inches to this tall which is about two feet and I'm super happy with these because they're now hardy and they look really healthy and they've already started producing Lovely ladies fingers for me. And we got uh, one. Now we got the fastest growing tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Tomatoes. So this one actually grew out of my compost. And what I do when a lot start growing out of the compost and uh, there's risk of overcrowding, I move them. And sometimes I let things be because I like the fact that nature chose to, you know, sit right here and produce right here. It totally took off and uh, this, at the moment, my zucchini is the star of the show. So we've got a lot of zucchini which I've shared with my neighbours and friends. And once again, I'm going to make a separate video on how you take care of these zucchini plants once they start taking off and producing. Once again, I've got random tomato plants growing and some will make good Christmas gifts and the others I will move. To a place where they can be a bit more productive with a bit and more we've got space. Chilies now. So right next to the zucchini, I've got these capsicums. I think I'm take harvesting them a bit too soon. I reckon they can get a bit bigger. So I will leave these for a couple of days and watch how big they grow. But you don't want them too big because the more you harvest, the better they yield. That is the general rule for for harvesting. In a permaculture garden, you usually look at companions and grow things which are compatible with other plants in order to uh, keep them strong and resistant to pests. Zucchini, for example, is good with the herbs like oregano and mint, so I will put some of my oregano and mint in with those plants because that helps to strengthen them. So there's more chilies that I've got. 
very abundant to eat. Lots of chilies. So this is my pumpkin patch right here. And I've got a bit of a shadow on it because of my phone. I've got lots of butternut pumpkins growing. And that's one, that's two, and there's another one. So wherever you look, there's little baby pumpkins. And they're such a delight to watch and watch grow. I've also got cucumbers here, which I've been harvesting. They're the small Lebanese cucumbers. There's a pumpkin. And there's another one right there. So awesome. This is so cool. Over here, I've got a lot of random things growing. And these, almost all of these came from the compost. And they were in the veggie beds and I transferred them here because they have more space here. That's a... Uh, that is, that's a tomato plant and rice log here, that's nightshade. So even between my plants, the weeds that grow are generally edible. So sometimes I have a dilemma as to which I wish to remove. I don't know which I wish to remove, the plants or the, the weeds, because I do know that they are highly nutritious and good for me. So I love them both. I've got another zucchini plant growing here. So this is gonna produce heaps of zucchini for me too, as you can see, zucchini, and more strawberries, lots of flowers, which means lots of strawberries coming up, and that's my first age of peach bottles, that's my, that's my moringa tree, so in addition to my zucchini and pumpkins, I reckon the stars of the show are going to be my tomatoes. I've grown lots of good, nice heirloom tomatoes here. And I'm getting lots of flowers and lots of fruit. There's one right there. Cherry red, uh, red fig, yellow pear lemon drop and, and beautiful names like that and everything is growing abundantly. They're indeterminate, they're indeterminate ones which means that they will just keep growing so I need to stake them up as opposed to the other tomatoes, the normal tomatoes. They will just grow to its optimal size and then it stops growing and we will just continue producing fruit. That's my blueberry and that has quadrupled in size as well. Over here I have a variety of things growing from my Italian basil to more lettuce in there and lots of uh, celery growing. I've got two pots of eggplant and they're doing pretty well and uh, looking quite healthy too. And in my last bit here I've got these beans which have really taken off. It's been a week since I planted the seeds which Sarah gave me so from seed to this height it's only been a week. I've got lots of eggplant here as well. One, two, three, six plants. And I've got a bitter gourd or bitter melon caramel as they call them, which I really am excited about and hoping that will climb up this right here. And over here, right next to my bedroom window. I've got my final veggie bed, which is exploding with uh, everything encroaching on everything else, and I have a lot of work to do. So let's start right here. I've got more bean seedlings, which I grew last week, and I'm going to transfer these to another place and make sure there's a trellis there as well. That's tomato plants again, grown out of my compost, and lots of cucumber and Japanese pumpkins that I grow here. It's hard to see everything, but I will show you what I can. These are my uh, fennel trees now. And I used a lot of fennel and had so many amazing meals with my fennel. And now I'm going to let these go to seed and I will harvest them for the seeds. 
I'm so excited about my fennel. Another variety of tomato. And you can see it started to produce lots of fruit over there and over there. And they're good companions for garlic chives, so I've got lots of chives here. Whoa, look at that. I've got lots of, lots of tomatoes. And these fruit like tomatoes and cucumbers, snow peas, I love them because the kids can come straight to the garden and uh, feast on these. As you can see something has gotten into that tomato which means that will need some attention and I will have to give an overnight vigil to see which critter is getting into what. So what you see beyond the tomatoes here, if I can get a close up, these are all my spearmint and next to it there's a whole sea of oregano which grows everywhere, it's just wild. Everything is just growing and uh, growing quite, quite wildly here. I've got lots of thyme, I've got lots of Italian uh, basil growing here and now the flowers have taken over but I do grow a lot of flowers for the bees. And right along here I've got some little pots of mint and parsley and rosemary which I'm giving as Christmas presents so my presents are usually sustainable and grown with a lot of love it usually takes a number of weeks for me to um, get them up so here I've got a chili plant which I will remove and plant somewhere else because it just doesn't got enough space lots of green chili go growing there and another pumpkin lots of oregano in between the pumpkin and the celery so loads of celery which I will have to harvest pretty soon because they are about a foot and a half tall already and I've got Thai basil over here too. Now these plants uh, my kale my Russian kale I've had for about three years and I decided I've had enough of the kale or they're kind of quite old now so I use them as my sacrificial plants meaning I let the snails feast on them and hopefully that will keep them away from my vegetables but uh, it still looks quite healthy to me so this one for example I will still eat so I'm going to climb into the bed here and show you what I have I've got Japanese pumpkins here and these are my shallots I have quite a number of shallots but the pumpkins decided to um, trespass all over them and you can hardly see them but and they're also wilting which is a good thing which means I will be harvesting in a couple of weeks maybe or in a few weeks these tomatoes are beautiful and healthy these all grew out of my compost so I will need to stake these up and give them some support because there's heaps of them growing everywhere So that's about it for me from my beautiful organic Sara I'll see you in my next video and I will show you lots more soon.